Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the African Wahala. I'm so sorry, I'm not able to go live on my computer. I'm having technical issues. My camera chose not to work for some reason. And I've been trying all that I can to, to rectify the situation, but I'm not able to. So for that reason, I am going live on my phone. As you can see in the background, I'm in my vehicle. And it's not going to be the same as it is when you go live on a computer. Because that way, you have access to the information that you want to talk about. You can share, I can share my screen so you can see what I'm trying to describe. But either way, this is going to be a short one, okay? Because of the technical issues that I'm facing. And it's um, it's about culture, religion, how it has been used to keep us quiet, to make sure that we are docile people that will shut up whenever the people that tell us to shut up, tell us to shut up. If that makes any sense. Um, recently, there was the circular released by the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG. I'm sure a lot of you guys came across that circuit. It came out on Thursday. They were talking about they will put their resources behind redeemed church members that are willing to go into the political space. Okay. In my own personal opinion, I don't see anything wrong in that because um, whatever you can do to achieve your goals, as far as it's within the legal framework, it's allowed. It's allowed. Christianity, Islam, if that is the platform that you choose to use to um, be of an advantage in selecting a candidate, come 2023 elections, so be it. But you have to stop manipulating the people. And that's where the problem is. Now, a lot of people are thinking that the redeemed Christian Church of God is trying to put their weight behind the vice president, Yemi Osibanjo. Because Yemi Osibanjo is a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. So it's reasonable to speculate that Yemi Osibanjo is who the Redeemed Christian Church of God is talking about indirectly. If that's what they choose to do, that all well and good. It's a democratic society. Even though, me, in my own personal opinion, I feel like Osibanjo being a complicit to the Buhari's administrations in humanity taking away the human rights of nigerians killing nigerians okay the NSARS protest happened people were massacred the mainstream media swept it under the carpet boari obviously doesn't give a damn the guy was not even speaking to anybody until he came out in the arise um arise news interview and he so sounded like a cold hearted killer he pretty much threatened everybody and said you guys need to learn how to shut up okay you guys need to um know when to stop protesting and when we tell you to stop protesting you have to stop protesting because if you don't we are going to use the police and the military to kill you that's what buhari said now when all of that was happening the sibanjo the vice president okay he was quiet he said nothing about it the guy had nothing to say about everything. Plus, if you think about the ways that Osi Banjo has collaborated with Buhari in the last seven years, okay, to keep Nigerians subjugated by taking part in the trader money, um, there was some other scheme that they had to remove 100 million Nigerians from poverty. Osi Banjo was one of the chairs. He was one of the people leading those companies giving nigerians ten thousand naira each to go and um learn petty trading to start selling pure water minerals biscuits so that can take them out of poverty and it made no sense right so if that same osibanjo is who redeemed christian church of god is trying to put their weight behind it's a problem but unfortunately many people are going to fall for that okie dokie for that trick because it's a christianity thing and this is the same thing that happens in the north in the northern part of nigeria you find there are imams there are um, sheikhs in many mosques telling the people that 
you guys cannot criticize your leaders in public because it goes against our religion. You guys have to vote for this individual because that is who we endorse. We, your religious leaders, we endorse this individual. So you have to go out there and vote for that individual. So these are ways that they use religion to keep us subjugated. And it's our responsibility to reject it because it makes no sense, man. You think about it. The religion that we've been pursuing for so long, which is important, by the way, and I'm not saying there is anything wrong in it. Whatever religion you choose to be part of, that's all well and good. But if you are allowing that religion to remove your ability to be logical, your ability to think straight as a human being, when a politician that was um, um, appointed as the minister of power, for example, has been incompetent, incompetent has not been able to provide electricity for people and then that same minister comes out and tells you his fellow religious people that man you know god's time is the best let's just hope on god to solve this problem that is manipulation and these are the things that we need to start rejecting okay even though we know that god is the supreme god's power supersedes everything else but that doesn't mean that god hasn't given us the brains to fix these problems by ourselves and we have delegated individuals in politicians ministers senators all these people to spearhead the um fixing of these problems i was talking about electricity for example if these individuals that have been elected or selected to spearhead the fixing of the electrical problems that we've had why then are they putting the blame on God? Why are they asking God, oh, let's just wait for God to find, to help us resolve this problem? No, God is not going to do that. It's left to us, the people, to do it for ourselves because God has already given us the brains. Okay? It's a very lazy mentality. It's a way to relinquish yourself of, the, of your responsibilities. And that's what these guys keep on doing. And that's why we have to keep on rejecting it. Okay? Um, like I said, this live stream is going to be short because I've had many technical issues coming on the live stream from my computer. I'm going to go into the um, cultural aspects. One thing that we have been raised to understand is that you have to respect your elders and there is nothing wrong in that. You absolutely have to respect your elders. I respect my elders. I have elders in my, in my family my community i respect elderly people i always give elderly people the benefit of doubt but if you follow the track record the history of nigeria you can tell that the elderly people that have been in power for so long have done absolutely terribly they've put all of us in a position where we are like second class citizens that's exactly what we are now those same elders that have put us in those positions will still use their elderly positions to keep us quiet they'll tell us stuff like man you can't disrespect your elders if you disrespect your elders or if your elders curse you it's going to be bad for you and for that reason many of us just keep quiet we're just you know just waiting for these elders to retire and go play with their grandchildren meanwhile they've committed a lot of crimes we refuse to hold them accountable while we are not holding them accountable we are emboldening the next generation of people to do the same. Because when they do the same, they are not going to be, to be held accountable and they are going to be called elders. Oh, just respect your elders. Respect your elders. Listen, you should respect your elders without a doubt. But if an elder does not deserve to be respected, then you need to stop respecting that person. That's all this conversation is about. We need to stop allowing ourselves to be used as weapons, okay? To be subjugated by religious and cultural what's the word that i'm looking for now situations okay religious and cultural dispositions we can't continue allowing ourselves to be used as tools we are the only ones that suffer from this situation at the end of the day the people that go us emotionally based on religion and culture 
they are multi-billionaires. Their children are living in decent countries where they have basic amenities, electricity, access to good hospitals, access to good schools. While we that are the victims of the emotional manipulation, we are left with a country that treats us like second class citizens. And these are the things that we're trying to fight against. Okay. So we have to continue having these types of educational conversations so that people can understand for once that man, it's high time we dropped some of these weird cultural behavioral patterns that we've had for the longest time because it has done nothing but being a detriment to our existence. So I'm going to end this live stream right now because man, I'm having hella technical issues. Hopefully I will be able to fix it and I will make it up. I will come back with a with a live stream properly explaining these points once again, especially when I have my notes right in front of me. I had issues with my computer, so I wasn't able to I wasn't able to um what's it called? To come live on the computer. Olola Day is in the building. Oh, man, Olola Day, my brother. I'm having problems, bro. I had to brother how's it going good man I'm, I'm so sorry man i i i have to cut the live stream short because i'm having technical issues on the computer stream yard i've decided not to connect with the camera and the microphone so i'm using my phone right now as you can see i'm in my car and it's just not the same i don't even have access to the information i was going to talk about well you're still you're still live right now Yes, I'm still live. I was about to uh, go off actually, just before you came in. Okay. Yeah, I was about to. But uh, oh, do you want us to continue, bro? Um. Yeah, we can continue. Okay. You know? okay. Even though I don't have my notes, I was talking about the the religious manipulations and the cultural manipulations. How these two tools are used to keep us as a people enslaved by the political, religious, and traditional elite. I know you have a lot to say about that. I can, I will just give you a freestyle. You say whatever you want to say. Well, in the grand scale of things, there's echo. <sighs> Sorry, let me mute myself. Okay, maybe that will work. All right. So in the grand scheme of things, generally, you know, our society is a society where people try to oppress other people. And they do this with so many other things, but the two major things that they use is the religious and cultural aspect of things because... As human beings, we are um, we are the culture that we practice, and at the same time, we are the religion that we practice. So, if we if you look at our political elites, for example, you know most of these guys they have maybe their father, their uncle, their great great grandfather as being part of the societal elites. So it's passed down to them and they have that position of power now and having that position of power they they are using it to their own advantage and at the same time oppressing other people right and one of the ways to oppress people is to make them to be sub subservient to whoever is in position of power and when you make people subservient, you do whatever you like without them coming out to oppose you. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. Because if they can't oppose you, that gives you a kind of like free will to do whatever you want. And looking at the Nigerian situation, the only way to make that continue to happen and the only way the, our leaders continue to have this in a position where they loot, they are not doing anything, they are looting all the money, they are doing whatever they like, is because people are not coming out. And people are not coming out because they don't even know what to come out to say. 
and the few one that knows what to come out to say, they are easily bought by the elite because you know one of the reward for you to join that class of the elite is by you you know getting the resources they provide the resources for you they come out in form of activists at times you know talking against the government but at the at the background there are things going on you know these same people dine and wine with the politicians that supposedly criticizing on social media so is is um so going back to the question why is it that the culture and religious are used you know by our political our elites you know both political religious and you know social elite is because these are the two easiest means for them to make people to be subjugated to them because if you use those two things, religious, culture, and you use it in a way to make people realize that, oh, don't go against someone because that person is older than you, or don't say something against this man of God, obviously, you've made that person voiceless. Even if that person knows that something or things that are happening are not good, they are voiceless. They can't say anything because they don't want to go against somebody that is older than them or someone that is a religious uh, figure, you know, someone that is like a spiritual father to them. Mm. So as a result, it's a way to catch the people. They've caged us on so many aspects, you know. We are not even talking of economic aspect of things where people are not giving economic opportunities. People are not giving proper education. People are not giving jobs opportunities so economically you are caged culturally you are caged and religiously you are caged so the only way out of this cage is for you to you know get yourself enlightened and make sure that you know what is wrong from what is right nobody is telling anyone not to be religious we are all we are i believe and this is my personal opinion i believe human being you know, we are we are a spiritual being. You know, that differentiates us from other animals like cow or goats, you know. It differentiates us. We are spiritual beings. We have to be spiritual. You have to have a connection to a supreme being out there. But why doing that, do not be blindfolded. Do not be um, mentally caged. For you not to use your mind to reason and think about things and and reason things logically don't just follow follow open your eyes open your ears when someone tell you something and see does this make sense even though this person is saying this is someone that i'm supposed to respect but what this person is saying doesn't make any sense you know i'm not sure i want to do this thing this person is saying you know, you can't tell me to continue praying for Nigeria when majority of the problem with the country has to do with our politicians not doing what they're supposed to do. You know, like roads are not being built and people are dying on the road, having accidents on the road. My prayer is not going to build those roads. The government has to build the roads. Exactly. Right, so those are the things you know. We need to start being logical now than being emotional or just being um, a blind follower. You get what I mean? So, bro, what would you say to someone that says heaven is the final goal? Because you know that that's the mindset of the majority of the people. They feel like heaven is the final goal. I'm just passing through this world. It's a temporary place for me. So since heaven is the final goal, I have to follow every single doctrine that would get me to heaven. And if that includes throwing out logic, not using my brain, just because a man of God has told me this is how it's supposed to go. What would you say? What advice do you have to such individual? Because I have mine. I have my own advice for such individual. But I would like to hear yours. Well, that's a very good point. 
you know um there's it's very difficult for you to convince someone that believes that you know the final goal is something eternal right something beyond this world i'm still hearing that echo. oh sorry so for someone that believe you know the final goal is heaven something not in this world it's very hard for you to convince them that oh you need to think about this world because they will tell you oh, is this world is just a marketplace i'm just passing through my home is ever you know it's true it's true you know i i can't tell you otherwise i can't tell you to change your belief about this world you know i do believe in evil myself but while pass, passing through this marketplace i have to be able to live in a conducive marketplace let me give an example so we have marketplace in in this world and we have our homes right so our home is our home and we go to marketplace right the marketplace we're not going to sleep over there we're not going to do you know our daily activities in the marketplace unless you are trading in that marketplace so i go to the marketplace to buy you know my full stuff and come back to my house but at the same time i don't want to go to a marketplace where people are defecating people are urinating right in front of where i want to buy my full stuff i don't want to go to a marketplace where people are cutting other people's head you know people are doing all sort of unimaginable thing right i would rather the people that control or the management of that marketplace take care of that market and make sure the market is a place it's an environment for me to go and have peace of mind and buy things that is hygienic that i can bring to my house and feed myself with the same thing applies to the heaven talk and this earth so if you believe the earth is a marketplace accepted heaven is the final place this earth has to be in an orderly place there's nothing god likes more than cleanliness and orderliness right and for this earth which in our own situation is our country nigeria that we find ourselves in to be in an orderly place the people responsible for that orderliness are the government the the political officials and these people have responsibility to make this marketplace this edge this country to be orderly and be peaceful is a responsibility right even though i believe everyone is the final home i am still obligated to make sure people that are responsible for this uh, for this place that i find myself for this country that i find myself people that are, that have the responsibility to make it a conducive environment are they are owned for their responsibility they are ed responsible to make sure they do what they are supposed to do so that that would be my answer to them you know i don't know if that align with what you have in mind yeah me what what i have in mind is you know since a lot of people believe that which i have no problem with by the way you believe that heaven is the is the final destination i am just passing through this world it's a temporary place for me when i die i am going to the real world the actual world that we are in now is temporary don't take it too seriously and for that reason this gives a lot of people the ability to be complacent now they will believe that since this world is a temporary place all the injustices all the crimes the unfairness the you know what i'm saying all that stuff that the way that we are treated okay especially by the political elites we deserve it because you're not even supposed to enjoy in the world it's a temporary place your final destination is heaven where you're supposed to be enjoying so while you're in the world any suffering that you come across adjust to it because that's the way the world is supposed to be but what i have to tell the people is even though i agree with you that heaven is the final goal it's still your responsibility just like you said bro god loves orderliness and cleanliness it's still your responsibility to be as orderly as possible while on earth and that's why for that reason if a religious leader 
tries to emotionally blackmail you into agreeing to be a second class citizen you go and do your own research in your bible or your quran go and read your religious books and see the the plans of god for man on earth and i'm pretty sure it's not a plan for suffering because god does not want human beings to suffer here on earth or after life so my own response to such people will be you need to go and actually read your your religious books by yourself and stop allowing other people read it and translate it to you that's my own response for such people and as far as culture um, comes to play i'll give you an example so i was on twitter i'm on twitter you guys can follow me the african wahala it's um at d-e-w-a-l-e-b-r on twitter atiku abubakar posted a, a tweet on friday in the tweet he was talking about he had a meeting with some leaders from the southwest caucus in the pdp and oh the meeting went great oh we are looking forward to a beautiful future now atiku abubakar is an old man we all know that he was the vice president for eight years so i responded to the tweet and i said mr atiku i would have shared it here but i don't have my computer so i can't i apologize for that i said mr atiku have you relocated back to nigeria now because we know you live in dubai you relocated to dubai after being the vice president for eight years while you were the vice president you made billions so right now you are a billionaire you even have a university a private university that the tuition fees is over two million naira per year now while you were there for eight years as the vice president one of the top political elites in the country the nigerian educational system experienced a huge regression it's plundered so you built your private university for rich nigerians meanwhile the poor nigerians have had their universities destroyed even further then you ran away to dubai now you're trying to come back to save us from the mess that you were a part of the contributors and then me i'm just asking you a simple question have you relocated back to nigeria or do you still live in dubai where you have access to good hospitals 24-hour power supply good roads your life is at minimum risk compared to if you were living in nigeria so have you re have you re relocated to nigeria or you still live in dubai then i started getting re responses article obviously will not respond to that but his fan boys he's not huggers article abubakar's ass leakers they came back and were like oh shut up can't you respect your elders respect your elders stop even your even your buhari because they just started assuming that maybe i'm a buhari supporter even your buhari is a useless guy article for president and you see what the problem is what i first noticed was how they were quickly using the cultural aspect to keep me short they were like can't you respect your elders obviously i'm not going to be responding to them because there are so many people and it just doesn't make sense so this is exactly what we're talking about as far as the cultural manipulations go people will use culture to keep you shut when it is beneficial for them now it's your responsibility to reject it and to educate other people to do the same because the respect that we've been paying to criminals for decades to criminal politicians criminal religious leaders it has only pushed us further into suffering that's what I have to say. What do you what do you have to say about that? You well, you said you said it all, you know, like that tweet. You know, the tweet you ask uh, article is a genuine question. You know, the only reason why anyone should get upset with any with that question is if article is actually living in Nigeria. And from what you've said, I don't think any one of them answered that question. Yeah. You see, you see, if we look at our problems, we can divide it into many angles, right? We, we can divide it into many 
many aspects. Most of the time, we know and we put most of the responsibility on our leaders. Even though our leaders have a huge blame in the situation in the country, but the we the citizen too, we have you know we have our share, and that tweet and the, the, the reply you got from that tweet kind of explain what I'm what I'm about to say. You see, most I don't know how to explain this. You know, some people call it so, Stockholm syndrome. I call it um, um, I call it abused abused child syndrome. You know. If you abuse people to a point, they start, you know, they start falling in love with people that abuse them. And that's one thing I've seen about we Nigerians. For some reason, you'll be surprised that some of those people that are supporting Atiku are not even benefiting from Atiku. They are not making any money from Atiku. You know, they are not Atiku farm boys. Even though most of them will be, you will see some of them, few of them that are not. But for some reason, they like article. And the reason why they like, like article is they themselves will like to be in, a, in article's position where they will be able to oppress other people. You know, people that are abused, people that are oppressed, if you are not, if you are not, if you didn't work on your psychological abuse, you will become the person that abused you. That's simple psychology, right? If, if a child got abused by his father, maybe physically, violently, he's, he's being beaten and being, you know, physically assaulted by his father while he was a child, and that boy grew up to become a man, most likely that man, when he has his own children, is going to abuse them physically too, right? It's a simple psychology, right? And that's the problem, or that's the thing that I see about we Nigerians. We've been abused for so long by our leaders that we are our leaders in the making, if I can put it that way. We are people that, even though we've not got into that position of our political class, we have the potential to be like them or even do worse than them. Because we don't know any better. Because we feel that the way our political class are abusing us is the right way to be a leader. You get what I mean? That's why many of them are replying you, culture play, play a part. Like someone saying, oh, don't you respect your elder? It's Atiku your mate, you know? In fact, I'm even surprised they didn't tell you, your father, does your father have money like Atiku? Who are you? Article can feed all your family, you know, those are kind of the response they will give you. Instead of them being logical and being, you know, mature about their response and saying, okay, Article is not, at least someone can reply to that, okay, Atiku is not living in Nigeria at the moment, but he's planning on doing so, and I believe that he's going to do that, right? Even though if that is a lie, that's, that's going to be a logical response to that kind of question. But most of the time, people don't use logic to give response in Nigeria, they 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 do it on emotional angle. They blackmail you culturally, and at the same time, a poten potential Nigeria that is not enlightened is an abuser in the making. <laughs> I want you, I I want you to have that at the back of your mind, which is the reason why you know someone that is is a gate man or someone that is a secretary in an office, we try to to use their power on you anytime you are in need of their help. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Like a policeman wants to use their power on you. Everybody is just trying to oppress. You know, we are just <laughs> potential oppressors, right? <laughs> and and that, that, that's one of the major problems with the country. Even, oh, even if you God. take out all these political elites that we have now, the mindset of our people is so skewed that they see oppressing people as the right way to be a leader. I mean, you'll hear people making crazy comments like, you know, we need, we don't deserve democracy. We need iron fists like Sunny Abacha, someone that can kill you for going against his wishes. Someone that will beat you up and throw you in jail. We need like an Idi Agbon Buhari era of 1983. 
where the um, KI um, Operation Kai, or where they will tell you that, man, if you refuse to line up at the petrol station, you will get thrown in prison, but you're going to be beaten up first. That's the mindset of a lot of people. We have become abusers, just like you said, bro. Majority of the people, they are just waiting for their opportunity to become the next abusers. And even if we get rid of all these political criminals, the next group of people that will replace them are more than likely going to be oppressors. And that's the huge challenge that we have. And that's why we, we need a, a mental revolution. It's already begun. I don't even need to say we need a mental revolution. It has begun. It has started slowly. It's slowly picking up traction, but slowly using social media, using these um, online platforms to communicate to people, more people would realize their own deficiencies, including ourselves, because we are not perfect ourselves too. So at the end of the day, make sure that you reject any form of cultural and religious manipulations that keeps you quiet that makes it impossible for you to complain to protest okay to hold people accountable because i know one thing for sure in the north right and this is not even an attack on the north because we from the south we have our problems too a lot of problems in the north a lot of these they have religious centers they tell them straight up that you can't criticize your elders in public you cannot criticize your political elders in public and that's why during that end SARS, while social media was hot from nigerians from the south saying oh boy is this boy is that man boy man da, 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 da. in the north they were consistently countering these guys on social media on facebook you check out their names they were all like no no you can't say that Bwari is a good man i'm like what are you talking about Bwari is a good man but if you think about it it's because they are also victims of religious manipulations whereby in their mosques they have been told over and over and over that you cannot criticize your political leaders in public it goes against our religion and that is manipulation because if these people actually go and read their religious books they would realize that there is nothing wrong in criticizing anybody that is a thief anybody that is a misfit in public there is nothing wrong in criticizing those people because if you don't criticize them you will become the next victim or you are a potential victim all right so with all of that being said bro um i would like us to round up this this section because i'm having too many issues man my lights just turned off i'm not even sure if my battery is dead like everything is just going wrong today <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. We'll, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back during the week on Wednesday. If possible, we would probably come back on Tuesday night. You know, just to complete this conversation and have it thoroughly explained. Because there are so many other videos that I wanted to share. There was a video of a military guy that was caught by his superior collecting bribes from the citizens. And then this military guy that an average Nigerian motorist fears, you're like, oh, ah, police, make I just give her money, make her make it the carry a while they go. This guy was crying like a baby. This guy that just proves to you that these people are absolutely nothing. The only powers that they have is the weapons that they carry. I'm talking about the police and the military now. The weapons that they carry and the fact that they are reckless. So you know, someone that is reckless that has a machine gun. He can just easily pull the trigger and regret, regret later. But that video should be a form of encouragement, of emboldening more people to realize that these people are nobodies. And it that's why one of the reasons I like Omoyele Shoure is that Shoure has already shown us time after time that don't be afraid of these guys. They are nothing. Don't worry. I am their customer. They arrest me all the time. They put me in SARS cells all the time. I come out. No problem. Though Shore is a little bit different because he's popular, it'll be difficult to do anything serious to Shore as opposed to an average Nigerian. But still, it should still be that video that came out that I wanted to share, but I can't, should be a point of encouragement to people to understand that now. Nah, you can't, these people are nobodies. That doesn't mean you should put yourself at risk. Remember, you're dealing with illiterate, reckless people that have machine guns. So when you approach them, don't be reckless. Do not just go out there and be arguing because you know when they argue their egos are bruised 
and they feel like, man, who you be? Do you know who I am? I'll kill you and nothing will happen. I'll kill you and I'll call you a, an arm robber and nothing will happen. That's what they will say and they will do it. They will actually do it. And more than likely, nothing is going to happen. So you need to be um, careful how you approach these people. But at the same time, you need to be equipped with the information that these guys are nobodies. Okay. I just wanted to put that out there. Bro, do you have any final closing thoughts before we round up this conversation? It's not a fin final closing point. I just want to, you know, uh, talk about the points you made about the military guy. Um, you know, one of the things that I notice about our people, our society, and I see a lot of people may joke about it, a lot of people may skit about it, is that for some reason, we've accepted that we can be molested by the military. You see so many skit on Instagram, on Twitter, you know, that, oh, um, I step on a military guy's shoe, I'm dead. I, I was driving on the road. I didn't know the guy was a, is, was a military guy. You know, the guy bashed me. Then I did work out for the guy. And I realized the guy is a military guy. I'm dead. I went to toast a lady. I didn't know she's a military. Then she, she told me she's a military woman. I'm dead. You know, like, there's so many skits that kind of accept the fact that we can be treated anyhow by the military. You know, this, you know, there's power in the media, right? What we're doing basically with that is just giving these military guys the power for them to do anyhow. I know it originates from the era when military were ruling the country, which was not, which was not supposed to be. Military had no business being in, in politics to start with. They have zero business. If you're a military person, you're a military person, you decided you want to make sacrifice for the country. And your position as a military guy is no, you are not in any way better than an engineer, for example, or a medical doctor, a pharmacist, or even a laborer, because everybody have their role they play in the society to make the society functional, right? But what I've seen in our movies, in our skit, or the social media, is a society that have accepted that the military can treat us and do any how they want with us. We've accepted it, you know. Like ah, you said, go. Why you go? Why you go abuse a military guy? Why you go take military man wife? Why you go do this to a military man? You are dead, you know. Like you know, so many skits. Some of them are funny, but. You have to understand the lesson those things are teaching us. The lesson they are teaching us as an individual is accept, be subservient anytime you see a military man. And what is telling the military people is be ruthless when you see the people because these people fear you, right? You know, we have to change that mindset. It's a terrible mindset, you know. Like you said, this this is a military guy that everybody probably running away from can't look straight into his eyes crying like a baby because he was caught taking bribe and i'm sure that guy that wasn't the first time he was taking bribe he just got caught that day and you know crying like a baby i, I really don't know what transpired or how it ended but bro I'm i was quite I was, sure. I was embarrassed for him man i was so yeah. embarrassed for the guy if it's mm -hmm. such a disgrace. The guy is such a disgrace, man. It, bro, this man was afraid because his superior caught him taking a bribe and he started begging, oh God, I beg, oh God, please, I beg. I don't want to, I don't do military for years. I don't want to lose my job. This is an idiot that had a machine gun on him. Mm -hmm. And it's that machine gun that makes an average person afraid and the stupid useless uniform. But he has seen his superior that he knows that this guy has the power to put him in trouble for catching him red-handed, collecting, extorting citizens. Then he starts crying like a little girl. Tears, drooling. I'm like, oh my God, bro, you're a disgrace, man. Anyways, I hope that is a point, man. I wish I could share my screen right now, but I can't. Hopefully- The one other thing I want to say yeah. is, most of the time we address issue the way we see them. Most of the time. Like, I would never support someone taking bribe, but have we ask ourselves the reason why most 
junior military guys and police officers take bribe in Nigeria? Have we talked about that? We've never talked about it. See, the culture, our culture is a culture that accepts people taking bribe, number one. Number two, these guys are not paid well. We cannot try to look away from this, you know, issue. Like we have the Minister of Defense, we have all these, you know, all these top military guys, right? Army General and all these guys. The money that's supposed to trickle down to the junior officer in the military being looted by these guys. So the action of one person looting and embezzle, embezzling the funds is directly and indirectly affecting every Nigerian's life. Because this military guy with his AK-47 is the same guy taking bribe from the people. This military guy with AK-47 and police guy with AK-47 is the same guy that's having accidental discharge and killing innocent people. But if you trace the action of this guy, you will realize that the fact that people at the top have looted the funds and are not making a proper you know, enforcement and a proper procedure to ensure that nobody is taking bribe in the country is kind of trickled down to affect everyone living in the country. So one action or the action of one man or few men is affecting the mil affecting millions of people living in the country. So that's one thing I also draw out from that. You know, the guy get caught, but it's not the only one doing it. There are thousands of other military officers and policemen doing exactly the same thing that, that are not even getting caught right now. As we are talking, somebody is taking bribe in the country right now, as we are talking right now, right? And we've not addressed the real issue why that is happening in the country. <laughs> you get what I mean? Until we address that, occasionally they will get caught. It will be one case of one guy crying, you know, one guy getting caught by the superior officer and crying. But the reason why that keeps happening, we've not talked about it and we've not addressed it. And until we do that, that is always going to happen in the country. All right. Thanks so much, brother. Man, let's call it a day. It, 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 it wasn't one of the greatest streams, but it was okay. All right. So thank you, everybody that came through. Thanks for coming through to the African Wahala Diaspora Radio International. We will be back during the weekday for more conversations to continue enlightening ourselves so that we can become a better society. Thanks for watching. Peace.